Okay, today we're going to talk about how to read two different types of curves, one of them called phase diagrams and the other one called a heating curve. And both of them have to do with changes in states of matter. And the first one, the phase diagram, shows the specific combinations of temperature and pressure in which a substance exists as a solid, a liquid, or a gas. It's not as widely recognized that changes in pressure will also uh, cause differences in whether or not something freezes, boils, or, or whatever, just as much as changes in temperature. All right, so here is a phase diagram for water, uh, this being the most commonly used example. And you see on the x-axis we have temperature, and on the y-axis we have pressure. And you notice that neither one of these two scales is linear, that is the distance between the notches is not the same. Uh, some of it's kind of crammed in, and some of it's kind of stretched out in order to show everything uh, in one diagram. But uh, you can see here the colors represent, in this particular uh, diagram, represent the three states of matter. You can see solid, liquid, or gas. And you can see all the different combinations of temperature and pressure where something would be a liquid would be here. All the different combinations where, well, in this case, H2O would be solid would be here. And all the different combinations that would lead to a gas would be here. So the only other thing that I want to include here, uh, just because this is the best place to do it, there's something on phase diagrams called a critical point, which is where uh, the distinction between the liquid and the gas is lost. Uh, and it's usually very, very extreme pressures. I think for water it's something like 314 degrees Celsius and something like 22 million pascals. You're not going to see anything like that on Earth. But you will see it on the phase diagram, so I wanted to mention that. Um, on the other hand, if we just pick some random spot uh, on the x-axis, uh, anything out past 100 degrees uh, Celsius, we know that we're going to have a gas there. That's going to that, that's going to be a gas that should be pretty well recognized. But the idea here is to find a couple of spots where we're already already familiar with. Uh, one, of course, being 100 degrees Celsius. That's at one atmosphere, 101.3 kilopascals. And that's the normal boiling point of water. So anything over to the left here is going to be in liquid. Anything over here on the right is going to be a gas. But right exactly on this line, on any spot of the line for that matter, is going to be an equilibrium between water and steam at exactly 100 degrees Celsius. So the, the temperature at which something, uh, water in this case, condenses is exactly the same temperature at which uh, water becomes steam. Uh, but at that exact point, it's in equilibrium. And again, just a notch beyond it, it becomes a gas. Just a notch on the other way, it becomes a, a liquid. Now, uh, another spot that uh, everyone's familiar with is the uh, freezing point of water, which is also called the normal melting point because that's the freezing point and the melting point is exactly the same temperature. Uh, and again, at exactly zero degrees Celsius, you have an equilibrium between ice and water. Uh, anything over to the left-hand side uh, is going to be solid. Anything over to the right-hand side is going to be liquid. But exactly at this point, it, there's going to be an equilibrium between ice and water. Uh, and the, the thing is, is this seems a little bit unusual to us uh, at first blush because we think of either something being either solid or liquid, ice or water. But the thing is, it's very rarely in nature do we come across situations where it's exactly zero degrees Celsius. So we're not usually familiar with that sort of thing. And even if we did walk out one morning, it's exactly zero degrees Celsius, we're probably not going to spend our time staring at you know the ice or something. So, um, and I mentioned just a minute ago that anywhere on, in any spot on a phase diagram, anywhere along the lines, you're going to have that same type of equilibrium. And I mentioned that and pointed out specifically with the little arrows just simply because that's a very common type of question on standardized tests on this subject matter is basically what are the lines? What do the lines mean? And the lines mean uh, there that's a spot where you've got an equilibrium situation between two states of matter. Now you might have already mentioned, you might have already noticed there's a spot here where all three lines come together. And the spot where all three lines come together is called the triple point. And uh, this seems even more unusual in that you've got a condition of very, very low temperature and very, very low pressure, which probably nobody will ever make you memorize. 
uh, you've got an equilibrium between all three states of matter. That is, you can have a sample of water that is freezing, boiling, condensing, everything, all at one time. But again, you see we're on the um, axis here. It's very, very low temperature, very, very low pressure. But that does happen. And uh, it doesn't happen anywhere on Earth. Uh, it can happen in the laboratory. So it's sort of unusual to see a flask of water that's boiling that has also has ice cubes floating in it. But anyway, the bottom line on this phase diagram is that you can one look and you can tell the conditions of temperature and pressure for any of the states of matter uh, pretty easily. Uh, so anyway, we're going to move on to a uh, heating curve, which is also related because this shows basically what happens when you're adding energy to, in this specific case, one kilogram of ice at one atmosphere of pressure. So all the rest of this is going to be everything at one atmosphere. Uh, so imagine you take this ice out of the freezer and it starts to warm up. And so the freezer is way below zero. Uh, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer until it reaches uh, zero degrees Celsius, which is the melting point of ice. And so naturally when it reaches zero degrees Celsius, it starts to melt. But something unusual happens because most people would expect the temperature as it's absorbing energy, the temperature to continue up and up and up like this. What actually happens is this. Once it starts to melt, you've obviously got a combination of ice and water, and the temperature flattens out. Uh, there, even though you're still adding energy, the temperature flattens out. And it continues to do that until the last little bit of ice melts. Uh, and only then does it continue on uh, upward in temperature. Uh, and what is happening here is that the, the energy that is being put in uh, to the system here, uh, where ordinarily it would be used to raise the temperature, in this case it's being used to rearrange the molecules from the solid state into the uh, liquid state, and therefore there's no increase in temperature. It's something called latent heat. Uh, latent means hidden. So whereas the, the temperature would normally ordinarily go up, uh, when you're adding energy, uh, when you're doing this in the middle of a phase change, the energy is used to change the state of matter. So, so far I've plotted it out up to about, I don't know, 60 or 70 degrees here. Now this is solid water. There's nothing in there but water, so there's no phase change going on. So uh, the temperature is increasing, and it increases on up, up until it hits 100 degrees Celsius, which of course is the boiling point of water, and something which now would be sort of predictable, it's going to happen, which is it will flatten out again because the energy that's being added is being used to change the state of matter instead of to increase the temperature. Uh, and so we get a similar flattening out of the curve. So we continue and we continue up until the last little bit of water is turned into steam. And then when we're adding more energy, because again, this whole thing is continuously adding energy, uh, then we get an increase in temperature. So this is a little bit surprising how uh, how this happens. So to sort of uh, sort of summarize this, the flat part of, flat parts of the curve are phase transition from one state of matter to the other. Uh, at these places, the sample is absorbing energy without the temperature being raised. And as I said, the energy is going into changing the state of matter rather than changing the temperature, and that's called latent heat. And again, latent means hidden. All right, so to summarize, um, the state of matter of any substance at any temperature and pressure can be found by examining the phase diagram of that substance. The lines on a phase diagram are where two states of matter exist in equilibrium. They love to have that on standardized tests, by the way. The triple point is the one set of temperature and pressure where a substance exists in all three states of matter in equilibrium at the same time. That's also a favorite on tests. And then lastly about that last curve, uh, during a phase change, a substance will absorb energy without an increase in temperature. This is due to the energy going into changing the state of matter rather than changing the temperature. The energy changing the state of matter without changing the temperature is called latent heat. And that is it.